God. In your hole. Hello, internet. Welcome to another edition of As the Sarah Wires. As, as the Sarah wa Wires. Today, I, Sarah, will be continuing the wiring on the MR2 if you're new and you want to get caught up above my head as a link to the last video where I did stuff that involved that. This is getting really awkward, so let's go back to normal life, YouTube. So, I got a body harness. I came in, and some other stuff. Inside this box is a 91 to 92 MR2 turbo body harness. And the reason why I ordered this, if you don't remember off the last video, is because mine has creepy green death. I won't give in. I won't just use that knife again to cut this properly. Yes, I will. It's 30 years old, just like mine is. It's dirty. There's absolutely no creepy green death. Oh, and it's got the bottom of the fuse box. Mine was missing that. That's probably why mine looked like poop. It's cut right here where it goes to the engine harness, but I would have to do that anyway. Oh, it's already so hot in here. Let's see if I did this without breaking any tabs. There we go. Tabberdoodle down. Every single time I pull off this kick panel, I break a tab and then I have to plastic weld it. Look how clean that carpet is right there. I'm proud of that. There's one, two, there's three. Ooh. In today's episode of unflattering camera angles and noises, I take out a body harness. Got that one. Okay, ouch. Oh my hair. Bodies that look like this also look like this. Do you enjoy staring at my spine? You're welcome. Holy ham sandwiches, that thing was tight. There we go. <laughs> look at my face, not my spine. See, some people have videographers that film for them and they get all the perfect angles so they look attractive on camera at all times. I look like Shrek and Rachel Maddow had a baby. I need to clean back here. The car's been sitting for a couple months, started getting dirty. That's not acceptable. Did I break anything? Nope. Okay. Come on. So close. Got it. This one right here is my harness. And here's the harness I just bought. I wanna make sure this thing is wired the same. The one that came out of my car says 57. The one I purchased is 58. I don't know what the difference is between the two other than in this harness right here is missing this terminal in this wire. Everything else looks identical between the two of them. Based on the part number on the harness I just pulled out of my car, this came from a 91, 92, or 93 NA or turbo. And then the one I just purchased, same thing, except it's JDM and not USDM. The part number came up with a bunch of websites not in America, and my part number for my harness came up on a US Toyota dealership's website. I just checked every single wire same color on all of them so all the wires are the same except there's an additional plug on the usdm harness and i think that was for egr and then over here there is some extra wires on this plug that mine doesn't have so bonus this has absolutely nothing to do with wiring but gabby is in town in Tucson. She was filming something with Motor Trend. And if you don't know who she is, I'll put her social media stuff. That's probably her text messaging me because she's looking for a parking spot on the screen below. That was all one sentence. So 
I'm gonna go out to dinner with her and if she wants to, I'll give her, her the camera and she can say hello to you. What? Just so what do it. I say? Oh, until we get to the car. this you camera is very heavy. You see this? I got a big camera. It hurts my arms. We were here in Tucson filming for, I don't know, what was it? Oh, Motor Trend. That's Makeup's right. melting hurts and my then, arms. <laughs> I had to come see Sarah. Woohoo! I like giving my camera away to other people. It's fun. I don't know I what to do. I feel weird on camera. Why? I don't know. You're I literally can... making YouTube videos all the time. Oh, there's more literallys. Huh? <laughs> I thought literally? we used them all up. Used what up? All the literallys. Literally? Oh, literally. literally. Wait, what did I say? Did I say literally a lot? No, Just literally. 797 horse purrs. You see this right here? Yep. <laughs> 797 horse purrs. This, this car freaking sucks. Both so, made by the same manufacturer. But that car is awesome. What Dodge needs to do is throw that Hellcat into the journey. Oh no, they just need to burn this. Or that. Burn it. Because... And just make more Hellcats. Supercharger sounds amazing. That's what it looks like when you shave a ferret. <laughs> Does that mean you're gonna do sick burnouts right now? Green light! No sick burnouts? Did you see this thing break loose at 60 going down the highway? Yes! It does rolling burnouts with traction control on. I want to see it break loose at 6. At 6? At 6? I hope you all enjoyed that intermission. It is now time to get back to work. Ouch, that was my elbow. It was a lot of fun getting to hang out with Gabby and her peoples, and hopefully she'll come back over here again and visit, and we can do some car stuff together. Welcome class to understanding the SW20 MR2 Turbo's electrical system. This is not an accredited class. The following two plugs right here are critical when doing an engine swap from a USDM to a JDM engine or doing a standalone ECU on the SW20 MR2 Turbo's. EA1, it is not in the game. Somebody got that. If you've ever worked on an SW20, especially doing an engine swap, you know this plug because a lot of people fuck this up. Essentially what EA1 is, is a junction between the body harness that goes to the driver's compartment of the vehicle to the engine bay that doesn't necessarily pertain to the engine running. This stuff does not connect directly to the engine harness per se. It does in a roundabout way, but I don't want to confuse things. Up top here, these first three circuits, this primarily has to do with the engine bay cooling fan system. Down here you have circuit opening and fuel pump, that's again for the fuel system. And then down here you have signals for the factory boost gauge in the gauge cluster for making your cruise control function, your diagnostic test port, check engine light, and your starter relay. Same with down here, this is E6. Kinda coincides with EA1, and that's why I'm grouping this together, because it comes directly from the body harness. ELS idle up, I believe that does coincide with down here, the magnetic clutch relay for the air conditioning system. Up here you have stoplight, check engine light, fuel pump relay, again, kinda coincides with EA1. Speed sensor, that is for your cruise control, again, coincides with EA1, and then STA, which I believe has to do with the clutch signal for starting the vehicle, like how some Toyota trucks have the clutch start cancel. I believe that's what that input on the factory ECU is for on these MR2s, to sense the clutch for starting the car. Yes, my vans are cow print, they are adorable. And this cluster of wires right here, more specifically the blue ones with the black stripe on them, that is the reason why three previous owners before I bought this MR2 could not figure out how to make this thing run because it was creepy green death on the fuel pump resistor circuit as well as EA1 was up. 
that was not wired correctly. I had to fix that stuff to make this car run. Now what I'm gonna do is I gotta add length to the wires that are going to EA1 because I'm actually going to make another EA1 because that is all relevant stuff that doesn't pertain to the Link ECU. This is progress. We just had our monthly car meet at the shop, so I kind of screwed off for a couple hours. But I'm still here after the car meet and I got all the wires laid out for EA1. I don't have the plug, however, so there's not a whole lot I can do without the plug that goes on the end of it. But I'm getting as much work as I can do as an ant. That one ran away before I could get to it. Minana. I have a piece of bacon in my teeth. I don't know why I'm putting that in a YouTube video. I'm, I'm going to. It's the next day. And I got some more work to do. I stole my Swampy Buddy back from the guys next door. I was letting them use it. They're not here. So I'm gonna utilize that and the air conditioner. Some YouTubers flex by showing you their exotic cars in really expensive houses. I'm gonna flex on all of you right now by showing you how I get to sit here for the next probably two hours and go wire by wire with this digital voltmeter and make sure that each wire I just soldered extensions on has continuity with the corresponding plug on the other end of this body harness and then label each one of them to know what that signal is for since there's duplicates of certain wire colors. IE1 terminal 8. That is it. That's all of it. That took five fucking hours to do that. Yeah. So what I just did was finish mapping out the other end of these harnesses. So yesterday I focused on the ends that were near the factory ECU, E6 and EA1. I mapped all that stuff out on this end. Today I went through the harness and followed the chain of where all these wires go to their terminal point on the other end of the harness. This stuff right here, I feel is why so many engine swaps, especially people that do the JDM to USDM engine swaps, screw things up because on JDM engines, not always do the colors correspond on the harness the same as a USDM harness. Sometimes they may be in the same pin and have the same function, but the color is different. So the stuff I labeled in red right here, this is a main junction towards the end of the harness that each one of these go to. And I labeled that on the board because the actual tags on the harness are the component which they control. So it's giving me double information. That's why I have it up here. What I'm gonna use all this stuff for now is when I go to hook up the Link ECU, as I'm sending the wires out from the Link ECU and tying them into the engine, that stuff is easy when it comes to doing the actual sensors, like temp sensors and pressure sensors. It's kind of common sense. But when it comes to this stuff right here, the body harness, in your hole. I feel like this stuff is a little bit easier to screw up because it's not as straightforward as hooking up major components on the engine that need to function for the car to run. And this stuff is important also, and it goes through a maze of wires all throughout the car up to the driver controls. And that can be easy to screw up. I can't see what I'm doing, so I gotta shut up. The IE one, there's that one. It smells like carpet under here. There's that one, there's that one, there you go. And this power junction right here, this goes mainly for the starter and likely the alternator. I feel accomplished for this video. Got the old body harness out, the new body harness in, and it's all wired up and ready to accept the new ECU. Hopefully this is starting to make sense because I know I'm not the greatest at explaining things, but here is all the body harness wires ready to tie into the engine harness at the ECU. So anything that needs to tie in at the ECU, it will be tied in here. And then the other stuff is gonna route out back to the engine with the Link ECU engine harness that I build. And then of course, I'm obviously gonna wrap all this up with loom and make it look nice and clean. And as far as the bay goes, it's not gonna be entirely shaved back here. It's I'm going to leave stuff that 
serves a purpose, but also make it look clean. So all of the relays that used to be on this rear firewall, those are all going away as well as a couple things down here. But I'm gonna keep the factory fuse box because I think it's functional and useful to have this back here, especially having a power junction right there. So that's gonna remain, obviously there's a lid on it. And then this big loom right here, this goes to the body harness. I'm gonna do something to make this look a little bit better and a little less noticeable. Obviously it's not gonna be just flopping around and I'll tuck it into a nice location down inside here but I want the car to still remain useful if I take this thing on a road trip and I tucked all the wires and then it's a huge pain in the ass to troubleshoot and work on this thing on the side of the road because I just wanted to look cool that's dumb so I'm gonna leave the main relay box and a few things accessible in here so that way the car is still practical to drive anyway uh, I'll see you guys soon with another video bye